Kimberly. And I'm Alex. And we are going to be talking on the Red Booth about Alex's amazing photography and paintings and his new book that's coming out. So come and join us. So hello, Alex. Hi, Kim. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm excited that this is going to be, I think, your first TV interview. That's right. <laughs> it's very cool. So you are an amazing artist. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I know you had um, your beginnings a lot were in painting and drawing. And then you also do a lot of photography. Yeah, I, uh, I guess my background is with a painting and I'm still painting. I don't, I'm not going to give that up. Um, but lately I've been doing a lot of photography and it's been a, the, so much fun and, and big learning experience. Cool. I remember when you had a big art show a few years back and um, he makes these like giant paintings. They're giant oil paintings, right? Yeah. And um, so they're like scenery, sort of almost like the old, like that old diner one. And it's very 50s noir. It's like noir, like film noir, which is style of movies. And I, I wanted to emulate that. I wanted to really um, make the painting look like you were watching a movie. And so. I had to make them big. I made them as big as I could, and what I thought at the time was humongous, uh, until I went to Italy and saw the giant. Uh, you know, ten feet I thought was big, but I guess thirty feet's big. <laughs> um, and I wanted them to look like an old movie, so uh, I did the black and white with the with the creative lighting, and um, I even used some faces from old French movies uh, in my paintings. And cool, yeah, yeah they look amazing. I love the one that also you have like some with older cars, which I love old cars, so yes. We're all about the cars. Yes, you know I am. And the bikes. Yeah, and the motorcycles. But yeah, so you have these beautiful old cars in some of your paintings. Yeah. It's funny, I had to research. There was one um, that I wanted to use, this really nice, cool curves, and it was surprising that I didn't know what it was. Usually I know what they are, you know, I've got a 64 Impala in one of them. Mm -hmm. It was a 1955 uh, Plymouth Belvedere. Mm. Who ever heard of that, right? Um, but it had really nice curves and nice chrome, and Beautiful. so I used that. Yeah. So did you actually like go just grab a photo, or did you like have a? Have yeah, a, um, uh, I do a lot of research lately. Actually, I've been painting um, old um, gangsters from the twenties, thirties, and I got Bonnie and Clyde, and Al Capone, and John Dillinger. So I've got a lot of research uh, into them. Um, what do things look like? What did the buildings look like? You know, I think that was even before elevators. So you know, buildings weren't very tall and uh, things like that. A lot of research. It looks like it. It looks like you've definitely put a lot into them, and they're so detailed. I know some of your um, also recent recent drawings that you've done. They look like a photo. Yeah, I try. I struggle between. Um, detail and you know broad brush strokes I like the broad brush strokes but well when you make a painting that's 45 square feet and you do a thick brush stroke like that you stand way back it looks like a little tiny dot and fine detail so yeah it's a mixture so I know you do this series of hand paintings um yeah that's um that's coming up that's soon that's the next thing well when you're painting you get um real hands-on and uh, you know you use whatever it takes to to make what effect you want to create and a lot of times you'll use um, your fingers to to smear some paint around oh, that's right. yeah this is so your finger painting these are finger paintings so what happened is I was doing that and I thought why don't I do the whole painting with just my fingers that would be funny and you know, this is how, how a thought happens. It happens within a half a second, you think of 10 things. So I thought, why 
why don't I do a finger painting? Oh, well, little kids do a finger painting. Oh, well, I never did one when I was a little kid. I might as well do it. Well, what am I going to paint? It's called finger painting. I'll paint a finger. <laughs> so, um, yes, I, that's my, my take uh, on comedy in fine art. It's I'm finger painting fingers. Now, I know when you guys think of a finger painting, you'd probably think of like a, a smudgy children's painting. However, when you see these images, it's going to blow your mind that he actually painted them with his fingers. So Can we put one right here? We're going right to put right one. Here. We're going to put one right here. We're going to show you. So, yeah, check it out. Here's a few of them. Really amazing, Alex. Thank you. You're very talented. Thank you. Yeah, let's talk about your photography now. Yes, uh, I got into photography from the painting, so that's perfect. Um, I needed good photos to paint from. Nowadays, you can't get a model to sit there for five days or so, as long as it takes to do a painting. And uh, also, that would be too expensive. You know, the whole starving artist situation. <laughs> um, so I needed to get good with a camera and I would buy a camera, learn how to use it, outgrow it, need a new camera. Eventually I f started to get to the point where I felt comfortable and, and confident and, and enjoyed my own photography. And at that point, I was creative already. I wanted to create things with it. So um, I'd had this idea in my mind for about 10 years since I'm here a native of LA. I've been here my, my, most of my whole life. Um, I had an idea where I wanted to capture the beauty of LA and share it with others and, and these great scenic vistas that I enjoy looking at I thought other people might be interested in seeing so I set out to capture those and I ran into some problems because there's too many cars and too many people <laughs> and all this traffic and the uh, you know the craziness of LA so I had to figure out how to get through that and how to eliminate that so um, you, I mean you know me I'm a night owl so you are too sometimes yeah, yeah. Um, artists usually are yeah. a lot of times yeah artists musicians everybody yeah. it's the thing nighttime it's creative at night uh, so I went out and found this one spot I wanted to take with the city and the freeways and the overpass and I thought it looked really cool but the thing is to get the right angle I had to get on the freeway and so I just did after thinking about it for so long I just said I'm just gonna do it and I just did it and I had to hop a fence and wait for the cars and run across the street and uh, set up my tripod on the freeway <laughs> <laughs> and took a picture and it was exactly what I wanted I thought it was great it was beautiful and and so in the middle of the night Alex is out there on the freeways yeah watch out for me don't, yeah don't run him over don't run me over he's um <laughs> waiting for there to be no traffic which is almost never but amazingly you've caught so many beautiful images yeah I get I get lucky sometimes there's um you know there is ne this is LA there's never zero traffic three in the morning, four in the morning on a Tuesday, it doesn't matter. There's still amazing amount of cars. Um, however, I do, I'm not, I'm not like interested in thrill seeking of danger. I'm just trying to get good photos. So I'm not taking huge risks. I can see a car coming from a mile away. Usually it's nighttime and there's no other cars. You can see the headlights way down there. So, mm -hmm. but I guess I, I've been trying to say to other people, you know, it's, it is dangerous. It's illegal. Don't do it. I'm not suggesting uh, anyone else go out and try this. Um, you know, there's there are, there are many other thrill seeker photographers out there. They'll climb up the buildings. They'll go out on the uh, the cranes that are building the new buildings. Um, mm -mm. No, that's my limit. I'm not. I'm scared of heights. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Well, we'll have to go skydiving and get over uh, that. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so cool. So now you've got this amazing collection and you've been doing this actually for about two years now, right? Yeah, I got addicted. After that first one, I had to get another one that couldn't have been its own thing by itself. So I had to go out and, and um, also there was a couple other places that I thought that were really cool that I wanted to get. So I had to go out and get them. And when I did, it became an addiction. I had to, everywhere I went, I saw another thing. I'm like, oh, that would make a great photo. That would make a great photo. So I'm now, I've now taken, I think, 3,500 photos. Wow. <laughs> in the last year and a half. I, okay, so I've, I've been friends with Alex for a while, and I know he had so many photos that he was like trying to pick, like, which ones do you want to showcase? Because there's just so many of them. Yeah, when you do an art show, they tell you you have to pick 20. And I can't pick 20. So you, you want to pick a small amount in an art show because you don't want, they, people won't be able to pick which one they want to buy. So, um, I have all these extra photos I didn't know what to do with and uh, made sense to make a book, a book of photos. So I'm actually running a Kickstarter right now. That's right. <laughs> uh, Kickstarter because uh, I have to buy 500 books and I want them to be really nice, thick, maybe 100, uh, probably 140 pages, nice, you know, quality cover, hardbound, dust jacket, yeah. full color, all that. Yeah, they're going to be really beautiful. That's what I hope. And also you're selling prints too, right? Selling prints. You can buy a print. That's the thing with Kickstarter. Some Kickstarters is kind of like a donate to our project or our cause. My Kickstarter's more buy something. You get you know? something for yeah. it. Yeah, and I think that's fantastic because then people who are helping to contribute to you so that you could do all of this crazy artwork and photography... Yes. Um, are going to get something back as well that they can keep and showcase and the you know art books are going to be available and you get something for it. So that's one of the reasons I really wanted to let everybody know about you and your Kickstarter because I think he's about halfway there on his target. He's up to about 10,000. And well, now 10,000. Next yeah. week hopefully will be that's right. 20. It's going to keep going up. So by the time yes. this airs, we'll, we'll see where it's at. So your, your total goal is what? 32,000. 32,000. Which covers printing all the books, a very large amount. Right. Covers printing the prints. It covers shipping and boxes. And there's a whole lot of things you never think of that need to be included. Also, yeah. at the end, it will also help to put on an art show, which everyone will be invited to. And um, we'll have a big party. Sounds I'll, good. I'll bring the wine. <laughs> Good. And so let's say if, so if somebody wants to get one of the books, how much should they donate to get a book? To get a book is $75. Cool. Uh, there was an early bird, which is all done now for $60. But you can also um, get an ebook for $35. You can get some postcards. You can get a big print. Um, yeah. Awesome. And these images are really, really beautiful. I wanted to show them a few of the, of the street photos that you've been taking of the freeway um, so they can get an idea. So, do it. All right. All right, here we go. Check it out.
there you go. That gives you some idea of some of the beautiful photos that he has been doing. And here is one of the books, actually. And it's called Nobody Walks in L.A., which I think is really cute. And it's called Nobody Walks in L.A., obviously, because these pictures, um, there's nobody driving. Yeah. So it's a whole book of, of these, you know, just stunning images. And, um, you know, you can go and donate on his Kickstarter. Here's the link right here. <laughs> you see people miss. Oh. <laughs> and, um, and then also, they should definitely go and follow you on social media because yeah. not just these photos, but also all of your amazing paintings. I, I love Instagram followers. It's just a thing. I think it's fun. Um, I try to post, you know, cool pictures regularly, so... Yeah, that's uh, Alex Scott Art. Cool on Instagram. Yeah, on Instagram. And then you also have your website. Website also Alex Scott Art. Not com. not Tart. There's two T's in Scott. <laughs> There's two T's. That's yeah. right. Okay, so Alex Scott Art dot com. Yeah. And also you have a, a Facebook page, right? Yeah, Alex Scott. You can find me Alex Scott Art through there too. Awesome. Very cool. Well, I know you've been getting a lot of buzz and, you know, even some of the local news here in L.A. has been picking up the story. Yeah. And it's really exciting. So I'm very happy for you. Thank you. Yeah. So after you're done with this, do you have plans for the future? After the book? Well, I, I'm, I'm addicted with the photography, so I'm going to continue that. I might do a second book. Uh, it'd be cool to maybe do another city or maybe do daytime. Um, who knows? With where that will go and I'm also working on the finger paintings and my gangster paintings coming after that which nice. I've already started yeah so those I'm really looking forward to those because yeah. you know I kind of love that whole era yeah. and um, I'd love to to know like how many paintings are going to be in that collection me too yeah we'll <laughs> see <laughs> So I know it's kind of crazy you going out into the freeway in the middle of the night and um, you have some like footage of this, right? I do. I had a friend come and follow me around for the Kickstarter so we could get a video. Yeah. Um, first thing that happened, we heard a cat screaming in the freeway on an overpass way up in, you know, who knows how he got there. And uh, he captured that on video. You can see that. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I found, yeah, I ran out in the freeway and and uh, rescued her. And it's cutest little kitten. She was, she was so. Uh, it was amazing that she was um, grateful, and you can see it. Like she knew I had saved her life because she like snuggled up to me and like sat in my jacket. And Aww. we, she stayed with us for the whole video shoot all night long because, you know, we made friends. She must have been scared. Oh yeah. Good job for saving the kitten. Yeah. He's a kitten saver. I mean, can it get any better than that? <laughs> um, so I would love to show a clip of you climbing around. How about we do that? Awesome. I've got a shot of me. I got a shot of me saving the cat. Isn't that save the cat like a movie thing? <laughs> um, I climbed this bridge, the Sixth Street Bridge, which they're tearing down. I keep hearing they're tearing down. I don't know when they're gonna do that. Mm. Um, but I climbed up this arch on it and. When you look down one side, you can't see the road, and it's over the river. So it's another 400 feet from wherever I was standing. Again, yes, afraid of heights. I was practically paralyzed, um, but I got a good picture. Nice. And uh, there's tunnels, and there's actually a network of old, um, old stairways and things, and bus stops and subway stations. Like I, they're. You know, plants growing all over and full of dirt. You, you never would know they were there, but they're there. Whoa. Yeah. Did you get photos of those too? No. No? No. Interesting. Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Uh, let's show everybody some of the clips then. Awesome. All right, so here he is climbing around in LA freeways.
I've spent the last two years roaming the streets and freeways in the middle of the night photographing LA. I started this project over two years ago and it's turned into an obsession. My name is Alex Scott and I'm a photographer from Los Angeles. I have taken thousands of photos all over the city. I decided to make a book with these because I wanted to share these images with as many people as possible. And this also allows you to see the images together as a whole, which really gives you the full impact of the project. A friend of mine told me that I restored his love for the city, and I didn't realize he and so many others had lost it. I want to do that for more people. I want to share this project with as many people as possible, and I want others to see the beauty of LA the way that I do. I'm on Kickstarter because I need to raise the funds to meet the minimum order of books from the manufacturer. Any support you can lend me will be much appreciated. Thanks for watching and please share this project with your friends and family. So do you usually go by yourself? Yeah, I usually go by myself for a couple reasons. Um, it's really late and not a lot of people are up. Um, I've had a few friends who want to come with me, but the problem is when they do, I'm twice as visible. And being alone, I can hide behind a rock or a bush or, a, you know. A, uh, You're kind of hard to hide though. I mean, how tall are you? Yeah, I'm 6'2". Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. When people are driving at night, uh, you got your headlights and it's dark. You kind of only look there. Uh, you wear dark clothes and stand behind a bush. I'm not even hidden, but they're not looking for me. No. So when it's a cop, I I hide a little extra. <laughs> but uh, I don't think I don't think people notice me really. Mm. Um, that's cool. Yeah. I wanted to ask you one last thing before the show is over. How did you first start getting into like art and drawing and painting? That's a good question. <laughs> um, actually, that's a good question. Um, it's funny, my brother, my brother told me like he, he wished he, at one point he wished he knew what he wanted to do with his life. And I, I thought about that, I'm, I'm like, how do you not know what you want to do with your life? As an artist, I'm just, compelled I don't know what it is it's just I want to create a thing I don't want to be an artist and then go okay what kind of artist am I gonna be and well maybe I'll be a painter and that'll be cool I just have a, um, a passion and a drive that I need to create this image however whatever it takes to create it and um, that evolved throughout my life and I, I learned to paint and then uh, if I didn't if I couldn't learn, then I just figured it out. And uh, same thing with photography, you know, I shot 10,000 photos to, to learn. And that's, so that's how I, I started as an artist. Did it's you just, ever like do classes or anything? I've taken little classes here and there in high school before, before I dropped out, there was an art class. And, um, you know, when I was little, my mom put me in like an art class because I drew this amazing pic, you know, amazing to moms, of course. Um, and no, I didn't really, I just pick things up as I go along. I had a friend, uh, he, he was a painter, he passed away, but he, he would give me tips here and there, you know, sit in the studio and, oh, what did you do there? How did, so pick things up as I go along. That's really cool. Well, you, um, very early on started to gain a lot of, um, you know, big followers and people that are fans of your art. Um, I know your first art show had a few you know, big actors and actresses and people coming because it's just so beautiful, the paintings that you do. Thanks. Yeah. And you're still selling those too, right? I, I have two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're still for sale. Cool. And uh, I will be having more art shows. 
that's part of really why I want people to do this Kickstarter. It doesn't just get a book. It gets uh, that art show and really is going to launch my next stage and um, push me forward to um, being able to create more art in the future. So if you want to see more from me, this is how to do it. Support me here. I definitely do, and I nice. think everyone else does also. Cool. So, again, congratulations. I think it's such a beautiful piece that you're doing, and, um, you know, I'm looking forward to the rest of your stuff. Thank you. I hope that a lot of people go and pre-order one of the amazing Nobody Walks in L.A. books by Alex Scott, and go check out his Kickstarter, and, you know, just go and follow him. He's an amazing artist. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching Alex Scott on The Red Booth. Every book that I have published has been the best I could do with a story that I really cared about and believed in. What was it to, to be finally on the other side of the camera? Because, you know, like you've been doing all these projects and like... Yeah, it was incredible. It was, I, I honestly, like I enjoyed it as much as I enjoy acting. I really loved it. So I was up one night and <clears throat> I came up with Crazy Town. I also always loved Dogtown. I was a skater kid. And I kind of just messed them together. I was like, Crazy Town. Yeah, well, you know, originally I became an actor with the idea that I could work as little as possible and then just play rock and roll. I started out when I was four years old. And I was filming The Mentalist while we were filming the movie, so... I'm just glad. Andrew's been very good to me. Oh, you're, you're, you're kind of being a badass in that one. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, you know? Yeah. But, you know, life has just gotten better, you know? And, man, everybody got to learn from the bottom up. Everybody. We, about eight months ago, went to the police and said, this is what happened to my dad. You know, my old band, Dead Kennedys, had broken up. We've since reformed. I think any time you do anything creative, um, it's got to be a little bit like having sex. <laughs> huh? Wait, no, I'll explain what I mean. Okay.